last but certainly not least. Uh, and obviously everyone in this room is very keen on GPT, so thank you for sticking around. Um, Hugh Williamson joined Optimal Stormwater in 2013 and is now Senior Environmental Engineer. He graduated from RMIT uh, in Environmental Engineering and worked for Melbourne Water um, and previously in Hobson's Bay City Council for four years. Where's that? Uh, West Southern. Um, he has worked on the design of multiple stormwater lasting and stormwater effective projects since joining Optimal and has been involved in the design, construction and ongoing operation and maintenance of multiple stormwater harvesting systems. Please welcome Hugh. Thank you, thank you Andrew and thanks everyone for um, sticking around here for the last session. Um, so this, I did present this yesterday at the uh, 10 minute um, rapid fire sessions. So this one will be the extended version of the uh, 10 minute one yesterday. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge uh, in particular Stephen Howell from Dover Regional Council who's the manager of infrastructure and design. Um, who's a particular key driver behind this, um, this project. So just a background for everyone to know where um, Dover is. Uh, basically, it's four and a half hours from Sydney, um, and it's made up of the former Wellington Councils and the Dover Councils, which have merged recently to become Dover Regional Council. And it covers quite a large um, area. So, I'd like to acknowledge um, again everyone from Council. These couple of votes here are from the media releases um, uh, published um, by Council. Um, in particular, we've got the uh, the mayor of W Council there, um, and that's one of the key drivers is actually um, the mayor of W Council. Uh, a lot of media in uh, W about um, pollution issues that are in the Macquarie River, and um, having sort of that um, both council and political drive, and I'll get into both sides of that uh, in this presentation. So uh, W Regional Council area has a large um, bush care group. Um, you can see here all the volunteers there to, to pick up the litter. Um, we've got large waterway users. Um, we've got kayakers, we've got uh, the houseboats, uh, sorry, riverboat there. Um, and they've got a, key, a, a bunch of keen fishermen. Um, fishing is a major part of the uh, Macquarie River. And you wouldn't believe it, but this, this one over here is actually um, that's a painting. <laughs> Yeah, art as well, a big arts community in um, Dubbo, and a very artistic photo as well. Um, however, Macquarie River is uh, stressed and needs urgent attention. These photos, these are all publicly available media photos uh, taken here. This was published um, from the uh, Dubbo Bush Care Group. That's the amount of litter they pick up on the Australia Day, just out of the Macquarie River, right at the CBD in Dubbo. Uh, this one is from the particular West Dumbo catchment that was taken by uh, in a storm event, and that's the litter coming from this um, catchment in particular, which we'll be addressing today. And um, this is the, from the active um, fishing group, is the syringe in the um, trapped in the nets. So, Council have um, they fast tracked gross pollution traps and other measures to control pollution. And rubbish getting into waterways. Um, they've increased, they've introduced for the first time, um, oh, sorry, increased street sweeping in W and Wellington. And in particular, here we've got this is one of the um, uh, weirs on the Macquarie River that provides a lot of the um, water source for um, agriculture and uh, irrigation of the river. And yeah, as you can see here, really idyllic. There's a lot of access to the river, particularly in the CBD. So around Dubbo, so um, high interaction with, um, with the water. Uh, probably the key is probably what we acknowledge Andrew Miller with the um, uh, parameter of the swimmable and you know, the interaction with um, water there that a lot of water is alluvium is great to do Just read out this quote here from um, Melissa Gray, uh, Dubbo's Healthy River Ambassador. Concerns, we can see rubbish in the river. So much to do, possibly by council and solve pollution traps. We may see less new ones, don't need as much maintenance as the old ones. It'll be good to see a river free of rubbish altogether. Really interesting line there. 
Uh, new ones don't need as much maintenance as the old ones. So that's forced um, WA Council to look at their existing maintenance practices. Um, which GPTs should they be maintaining more um, to get a better environmental outcome? Uh, again, a lot of wording here, but this is um, exact wording um, released by Council's um, former manager of technical support, Mark Stacey. Um, <coughs> won't read it all to you, you can read it up there, but I'd just like to hear, highlight the key thing. One solution identified was the installation of GPTs in the Dubbo area, and Council have applied for grant funding from the state government um, to the installation of GPTs. Uh, really critically, 16 outfalls across um, Dubbo, and half of which Council have identified they don't have GPTs or any water quality um, measures at all on them. Um, and through that analysis, which Council undertook internally, that they identified that four areas um, were critical, including the West Dubbo outfall, as the system is quite outdated. And I'll focus on that here as we uh, with lessons learned. So, Council's four year budget have allocated three million. So there's a lot of um, uh, support from the um, local government for this. Uh, excessive amount of rubbish in the waterway. Uh, Dubbo Patches, which is um, Matt Hansen, works at the figure in um, Dubbo. Ask Council what was wrong with the existing GPT system on the West Dubbo outfall into the Macquarie River. Um, so, uh, Council took their own internal review of you know, all stormwater outlets into the river. They then categorised these. Um, into controlled or uncontrolled uh, in terms of pollution um, to, uh, capture devices. And then they've also identified hot spots. And particularly saw some of the photos before the bush characters picked up all the, the litter, the, the um, fishing groups picked up the syringes. So from this process, council and internal staff they prioritized four high priority catchments, um, which I'm going to be focusing on for this presentation, as well as along with the timelines. Um, so the first uh, hot spot at uh, Walter Street. Uh, outfall that was already installed. Um, and Council have then got West Elbow Main Drain uh, this year, Tamworth to outfall next year, Emil Cerecia Bridge next year, and uh, continued work of GBT upgrades um, to address uh, over the next several years. So, this is just the aerial view of the um, WCBD, as you see, quite highly urbanized area with a close proximity to a uh, very large catchment river, Macquarie River. And um, you can immediately see how close interaction everyone can get from the CBD of Dubbo and West Dubbo here, how close they are to um, the water and interaction with water being um, a key feature of um, the Dubbo area. This is Council's catchment map um, with the red. Outline being the catchments which have GPTs on them, with uh, those green dots being the GPTs. And just going to use this and expand upon this for Council's four hotspot priority sites. Um, the first one being the Bolt Street 34 hectare catchments. Uh, the second one being the West Dubbo Main Drain outfall, 281 hectares. But critically noting that it already does have two GPTs on it, uh, and a particular that we talked about afterwards. And particularly identified by Dublin Council themselves as those GPTs being deep deficient. Uh, the next catchment identified is the Hamworth Street uh, outfall. And then the final hot, uh, hot spot identified by Council is the Nelsosia Bridge. So, going on to go through these one by one. Um, the Bolt Street outfall. This was designed to play stall um, last year and ended up and the year before by Hopkins Stormwater. Um, it was really interesting, it was a supply and install contract. Uh, critical wording, I'd like to congratulate the council for having a sort of condition of working drawings that allowed the um, design process um, within the supply and install contract, and also particular acknowledgement for um, not having a bank guarantee and having a 5% retention money instead. That was a really good um, uh, measure, we found that to be very successful. So uh, we chose a Humor HD40 as the GPT um, submitted and uh, was successful in tender and um, involved not just the GPT but two pipeline diversions from either side and a total cost of um, yeah, about 220 pay for the design, supply and installation. Uh, this is the overhead view here of the um, site, so that's the main Bolt Street uh, catchment there. Um, we had the GPT um, located in an area just prior to the outfall into the river where it could still be easily maintained on level ground. 
uh, and having the two pipeline diversions um, just prior to the uh, TPT. Right adjacent to the existing ports of the um, So here, this is uh, just some photos of us uh, doing the GPT installation and, uh, and critically here the pipeline diversion. A bit hard to tell, but it was interesting, it was a drop uh, pipeline diversion. So we constructed this to fit around existing, this existing pipe here, and then the, that, would, that dropped and went away towards the king So there would be no control effect from that um, uh, drop diversion from the other cache. Uh, There's really good soil, as you can see, for installation. Nice red, um, red, uh, red, dusty soil. Uh, on the GPT installation day, we had a whole bunch of media crew come out. Um, one of the photos you saw earlier was from all the council staff and um, yeah, media releases on that day. We'll be doing about that shortly. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, we fenced off the sides, kept all the spoil away, and then we had the, the crane for the GPT installation. So, getting to the, the video, this is what was um, published on uh, Nine Win on, on that night. Uh, also, just you know, we just did discover in the uh, soil there, there you can sort of see it there the, um, the heritage um, piles of the old uh, bridge that went across the um, Macquarie River. So, I'll just load the, um, the presentation here, which that guy just trained me to do. Going down, it enters the device. There's a steel boom that directs the flow off to the side, down through these strings, up the other side, back across, and then down the pipe. Over time, pollution will build up in here, and when it reaches about here, it's time to give it a clean. The beauty about this particular screen is that during a storm event, things might go you know, block on the screen with the flow. But because there's no horizontals, after the storm event and the pressure comes off, the stuff just slides down the screen, sinks to the bottom, and frees up all the area ready for the next storm. It's a low hydraulic impact, this particular GPT, so it's guaranteed not to cause any flooding. Um, you've already got one of them down the road here. This is the next one, and I think this sort of completes the puzzle of all the catchments from the main part of town. Um, that's about it. What else can I tell you? It's designed to take out high levels of silts and sediment. It'll trap every cigarette butt, every pet bottle, every shopping bag, every syringe, whatever's coming down the line, it's going to be diverted in and stored in that, in that large chamber at the bottom there. In high flow events, the stainless steel weir or boom is designed to actually lift and instead of a normal um, GPT with a fixed weir where the flow goes over the top where you lose the floatables. This one doesn't. It actually floats and rises. So even in high flow events, it will still trap the floatables. Um, it's a very good device. Hopefully it all goes well. We should be out of here by about Australia Day. So um, with that, thank you for coming. Any questions? Go for it. No, the whole boom will rise and let all the water through. So it can't flood anyone back up in the city. And even if it could, if something went wrong inside the device, it would surcharge in the grates in the park and then the grates in the road here. And it wouldn't get back up into the city. So from a flooding point of view, it's a very good choice. It'll be a very good solution. But are they still trapped in a flood event? Yeah, so the as the boom rises, the floatables will continue to be caught, but the neutrally buoyant stuff will go under the boom. In a normal trap, the weir is at the bottom, and the floatables would go over. Um, it's just a different way of achieving the same thing. So it's only in an extreme rain event that it will be bypassed through the river. Correct, yeah. yeah. All the small and medium events will be going through the device, which should be in the order of 90 to 95% of the water by volume. So we should catch 90 to 95% of the pollution. And in fact, even more, including like the first flush and stuff. Oh. Okay, Mark Carl, nine, nine win that night. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll just that something there. The funny part about that whole thing was, um, council advised, oh, we've got, we've got some media coming. And I assumed it was gonna be 
you know, the local wag would turn up, take a couple of notes, and maybe click on a photo or two. No, we had about 30 people, including all the councillors, TV, um, the print media, etc. Everyone was there. My council hadn't actually organised anything. There was there was no briefing. There was no nothing. There was no one. There was no instructions to where to stand or what to do. So after five minutes of everyone sort of going, well, where do we stand? What do we do? Etc. I sort of went. Jesus, someone's got to take control. <laughs> I've got a fluoro vest, they will listen to me. Put the hat on and said, right, who wants to know what we're doing? They go, like, yeah, we want to know what you're doing. So, completely put you half an hour media extravaganza, and I ended up on win and nine go. Nine run for seven, Brian. Nine seven, Brian, nine win, yeah. And, um, yeah. So, here's our. So, you had to go over on this question. In the uh, inside of Hume Guard, uh, let's talk about some of the advantages of the Hume Guard GPT. It's a uh, very large offline storage area, you can fit 50 Mario panels in there. Um, and you can see the screen as well, it's the same, same size. Um, one of the yeah, big advantages, one of the things we like about it is the, the vertical wax in there, collision will fit against it, and when you're cleaning it, you slide down the element itself. Um, something we had. Um, had as a, uh, requested as a customized uh, items, um, where in particular, like the highlight is the 100 mil um, concrete weir below the floating boom. It's not normally seen on the Hume Guards, but one of the things we found regularly through auditing of um, GPTs uh, is that the Hume Guard, the, the floating boom, would fall back down. It's usually at the same inverted outlet as the um, income stormwater system. And the flow events it would rise up, but as it would come back down, there would be here we go. One of these would wedge it shut, wedge wedge underneath, and it would be you would have a gap underneath. Next storm event, the flows would not go to the GPT, it'd go directly downstream. So um, yeah, having the addition of that reduces the chances of um, blockage of that um, floating boom in the future. Another thing I want to show on the next slide, but with the uh, customized lids, which we specifically um, Designed it. Hume's uh, been a free casting company, they can free cast whatever you want, not just the exact product from the brochure. Uh, particularly, we wanted four lids over the pollution storage area, both uh, in front of the screens and uh, behind the screens. Then, particularly for serviceability of the boom, as it is a floating part of the stormwater, um, we had a lid over the um, inlet and flute boom for um, regular inspections. And then we also had a um, junction pit for where the Three upstream pipelines met before going into the GPT. Uh, I think probably don't have a photo of, but we put step irons all the way down because in Hume Guards you do need to, on a regular basis, get down inside the device and sweep, suck, jet, blast underneath all the pollution that's accumulated underneath the cone. So you do need regular um, confined space entry into the GPTs to, um, to clean them. Just like a lot of words here, but I'd just like to focus on this. The exact published words by um, council is that two within the moving on West Dubbo catchment, uh, that there's two GPTs exist one a Barramie main deflection unit, and the other one a trash rack type arrangement. Both of these units at their respective installation time frame were possibly the best units available at that time. There's nothing inherently wrong with either units. However, they both have limitations based on size of the contributing catchments area. Um, very generous um, wording there from council about their own existing GPTs and uh, looking at what they are and deciding to address them. Um, so, council have, have applied for, have, has funding to install a GPT to capture an additional catchment area in this uh, West Albert area, as well as developing additional broader stormwater strategy. This is what's um, published in their, their cleaning tender. Um, this is basically all the information there is on the, these two GPTs that are existing in the catchment, where there's a lot of litter pollutions identified downstream. Uh, Barony, access issues when wet, okay? Um, after cleaning, it's easier to drive two men. Minimum inspection that around one month, and inspect every 10 mils. The other GPT, uh, interesting, not a designed GPT acts as a trash rack. Critical inlet needs to be regularly inspected in heavy rainfall to prevent flooding of the highway. 
So this is just a map uh, of where these uh, everything is in this catch box. Um, Barry, open channel, 281 hectares, or 230 point. Then you've got the trash rack, not designed as a trash rack, so it's kept with exclusion bars. Um, then downstream of this, this is where the photo is taken of all the litter. Um, Council looking at the potential GPT site around here for the uh, following grant funding through Stronger Communities Fund. So, what can everyone, this is the upstream barony, what can everyone tell me about what's wrong with this picture? Oh, very small. Small inlet. The opening is quite incredible. Fall in the park? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Small inlet. It's it's busted. Yeah. It's it's busted itself. Um, broken. Uh, you've got mesh here. You've got uh, racks here and veins over there. You can already see. It's kind of quite see the veins have already bent and buckled to the, the force of the water. You know what it was last night. Yeah, no a lot of debris there. Yeah, no, I don't know, sorry. And looking here, these are the veins on the inlet to the device. What's what's wrong with this picture? It's more pollution on the downstream side of the veins than the upstream side of the veins. Yep, and in between every vein is a Coke can. Yeah. Coke can, pollution, uh, solar. Um, yeah, this is basically when the as this is inherent, nothing inherently wrong with this, but it was at the time uh, pollution design, designed to flow in. You've got mesh here that blocks veins that let hardly anything through compared to vertical racks. When the water comes in here, swells around, nowhere to go, it comes back out here through these large openings and out again. And what do we end up seeing? Oh, yeah, so this is a good, good element of the barrowing. Uh, I'd just like to acknowledge that the, uh, the vertical trash racks they have at the very end of the device. Um, good job, and yet it looks like, couldn't say how long since it's been cleaned, but it's got some stuff. Moving downstream, this is the, not a, not a design GPT, but technically it's exclusion bars acting as a trash rack. So all this stuff is what has not been captured in the barony, has made its way here, and this, as you can see here, the pollution deposited up here, so when the flow can't get through the Trash rack goes over here. Council had to concrete and uh, crush up this area. It's previously scoured, scoured away. Overlap flow is going over the highway to the outlet. Uh, here we are looking a bit closer. So well, why didn't the barony catch up all this stuff? Uh, this has taken another time. It's a bit cleaner. So you can see here mesh, um, angled bars to the drop pit. So this is uh, I've had mesh under all that stuff. It's actually on top, so the mesh is like the walking frame to go on the top of the, um, the exclusion bus. So on the photo on the left, you're looking at the water going to it. Yeah. And the one on the right, you're scanning directly above it, so the water's coming down from the top. Gotcha. And I think there's a whole lot of uh, foam or something rather in the water in the channel. So mm -hmm. only the very bottom of the angled racks are blocked on the photo on the right, whereas the entire thing is blocked on the photo on the left. And it's like you've got 280 hectares of wherever it is, and it's all got to go through there. It's got an exclusion bars that blocks the top, mm -hmm. and then send 280 hectares worth of flow straight over the highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see extreme risk um, for council. You can see how pollution can be yeah. such a critical uh, issue in uh, stormwater. This is the downstream site, that's the highway there. This is the location that's identified, uh, that's inside the pit for looking at a potential GPT site um, in the near future. Moving to the uh, second or uh, third hot spot, uh, Tamworth Street Outfall. Um, potential site located around here, but maybe shifted further east. State uh, Council to install a low level bridge, which may require modification to the stormwater network. Um, just how that is, that the outlet is, is over there. Um, that's understanding on the pedestrian bridge. And that's the last stormwater inlet pit um, prior to going, uh, being discharged into the Crow River. So, where my understanding is the potential uh, GPT site the council are looking at. Uh, the other hotspot is the Emil Saucier Bridge, large catchment um, with potential GPT site identified around here. The council nominated that already, um, published uh, that financial year that we installed in. Um, 
Yeah, well, can anyone tell me what's the problem? That's the outlet right there going directly into the the the, the bridge, the, yeah, the bridge. bridge of the bridge. Is that what were they thinking? Um, so you've got, already got a lot of issues there. And this is standing at that outlet as uh, another um, syringe. Very weird. Yeah, she needs a patient. <laughs> like, I don't think it's going to move. Yes. It's a bridge block. And then it's got a, the flows would come around yeah, there and scour around. Yeah. yeah, some serious considerations there. Um, so, in summary, uh, Council have got 61 GPT. It's the first hot spot uh, tube has already been installed by Optum Stormwater. Um, the four hotspots have been identified by council internal staff and programmed in for annual works, public science. Um, so the plan to have 65 GPTs by 2021, including the upgrade of the, all the GPT rectifications they're planning. And then beyond that, there'll be at least eight over the next four years to 2023, um, five more to come online for 2023. So in summary, uh, WA Regional Council have planned underway to protect the Macquarie River. And 
No, it's yeah, and so it was well, there is a new mystery on that catchment. Well, there's a um, right, there's a little bit of industry which is probably not that environmentally friendly, they have their yeah, really focused on too heavily, but then you have huge areas of that. Mm -hmm. So, if the GPT doesn't need to be huge because of the load, but it's got to handle a bloody huge load. So it does rain, and it's, it's got a fair amount of catchment to, to deal with. Well, I like how they need to be catching sediments and fills off that really big catchment. No. They're not. Uh, yeah. Well, yes, I, it's not. Nice yeah. Um, there's a, what's the, the bend in the river called, where all the pollution gets called Devil's Bend? Devil's Bend, is that what it's there's, there's just a, a natural area where the river curves around to the right, and there's like a little beach, for want of a better term, there, and the residents know it, and there's a park nearby, and people use it to get access to the river, to jump in their kayaks and go paddling and everything else. Um, but for whatever reason, there's an eddy current there, the floating lizard that comes down the, the river during the storm event will actually congregate there and just gets covered. Um, so the, the two big drivers are the people wanting their nice clean beach to access and, and interact with the river, and the other one is the fishing um, lobby. The guys up there are all going, you know, we don't want to go fishing and have litter and crap and rubbish everywhere. We want a beautiful, pristine fishing environment. So they're the two drivers. And actually, well, actually your question before, Tom, there was one other thing that we did find, and that was um, the it wasn't in this catchment we were looking at, it was in the catchment right next door because we had some time walked around and looked at some of the other devices that they had. Um, there's a bridge, and underneath the bridge is the local spot to sit and shoot up. There would have been a hundred syringes sitting around this sort of bonfire area with you know bombs and, and shit everywhere. I'm just going, wow, from a work health safety point of view. You want to be fencing this off or cleaning this up or whatever now, but well hang on a minute, you're just moving them to somewhere else. At least if you know they're here, um, you can come in once a week and you know, make it safe. But um, your stormwater system needs to be able to capture all those sort of things. And um, yeah, not too hard to find a couple of syringes around. Interesting. In relation to your question, Andrew, the council told us that uh, the data, clean data they were getting was between 0.2 to 0.5 tons per hectare in the Dubbo area. Um, but we also asked, is that due to efficiency of your devices, as you saw, not performing the best? Um, the other ones we saw were some nets as well. So, were they? They've got 60 odd devices. They have 60. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thanks very much, Hugh.